see if we can get some of these big monster carp. There he is. Oh my God. Buddy, this is one of the biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. Well, I hate to start this episode out on such a low point, but I kind of got to explain what happened this day. So on the flight home, uh, I, I pulled up my computer uh, to start going through some of the footage, and I'd like to think that I have a pretty organized system up to this point with organizing my clips. I've got my main project folder, and then within that I've got each day broken down into folders, and then within those folders I've got you know GoPro, Sony, drone folders for those specific cameras that I'm using that day. So I'm going through, and I get to this day, and I click on the Sony folder, and sure enough, it's empty. All the footage is not there. And this is like my worst nightmare as a filmmaker, so the fact that this actually happened, I was just shocked. I wouldn't have been that upset if the fishing was just okay or if it was slow, but I kid you not, this was one of the most ridiculous days of fishing that I've ever been a part of. Somehow I remembered to download all the GoPro footage oh, and yeah. all the stills from that oh, day, but unfortunately one, all the Sony footage was not there. As much as I would want to have that footage back so I could watch it and so I could share it with you guys, uh, it's gone and it is what it is. Fortunately, I was able to be there, experience that day, and still have that memory whether we got it on film or not. And it's one of those situations where you can pout about it or you can accept it, learn from it, and move forward. That's what I did and now I literally triple, quadruple check my footage uh, to make sure it's dumped every single time I'm out shooting. So for all you out there who film or take photos or anything like that, hopefully you can learn from my situation so you do not make the same mistake that I did. And on second thought, maybe this is just the fish guy's way of saying, you know what, let's keep that spot secret for now. Anyways, enough of me talking. The episode gets a lot better, I promise. So let's get back to it. We got this little oxbow that I guess connects to the river. And there's a bunch of nice fish down here cruising around. So we'll try to sight nymph them up or something. See what Stick happens. Okay, what we're gonna do, go down to the, to the edge there and real sneaky like, mm -hmm. okay? And maybe when there's not many fish by, and we'll just wait for one to cruise by us. Dude. Oh, I saw his mouth open. I messed him up. I didn't set the hook good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you lose him? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't happening. You see, I missed the hook set. Yeah. Damn. Big one, dude. I got him on 5X, though. Dude, this thing's huge. Oh my god. He's just sitting in that riffle. Follow me down, Shai. I'm gonna help you net it. Dude, he's got another fish in his mouth. So there's these antelope up here and I was sitting there looking at the antelope and my, my dry's gone. It's dipped under because I was using a dry drop and this guy ate. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. 
My man. Well, you wanna go home? <laughs> I'm done for the day. <laughs> Let's get another, dude. I'm, dude. Is that the biggest cutty you've ever caught? Those fish don't exist. That's a hybrid. So as we were fighting this fish, uh, we noticed there's another fish in his mouth, and we're just scooping it up right now. That was in. That was in his mouth. Crazy, dude. I had to see if the rig was deep <laughs> enough. How did dummy prove it for me? Oh, that was a good one, dude. I didn't get a good hook on him. Put the Kevin Van Dam on him, baby. I know, I tried at the end. Well, after a couple hours here, after I, uh, I missed a few fish and Scott pulled in an absolute monster, we are going to head back. We're just walking back right now. We're going to head back to the car and we decided we're going to head back to Idaho and we're going to finish the day off um, on the Henry's Fork and hopefully get into a little dry fly action. The, the bites just kind of slowed down here. It's kind of turned off. So instead of staying here for a couple more hours and not really getting anything, we're going to drive back hopefully just in time for some dry flies to be coming off. <laughs> Well, due to my inability to catch a fish today, uh, we came to the Henry's Fork and we're gonna try our shot at uh, some dry fly action. We'll see. And, uh, and he's he's trying to. Yeah, Scott only caught the biggest fish in the <laughs> creek today, so now he's like, I, I'm really not satisfied with that, so I gotta go back down to the ranch. And we're going to an even harder place for you to catch your fish today. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so basically, know. you know, yeah, like a 25 a inch shot. fish isn't good enough for Scotty, so he's like, I, get, I you know, I gotta go down here now. And yeah. <laughs> kind of just a. You know, and I worked today. Didn't get to see that. Of course. So, yeah. yeah. I always work on the days where, you know, cool shit happens. That's just how it goes. I don't know what the problem is, but that's just, that's how it goes. That's how it goes now. I also did miss a 20 incher here last night, and uh, I, I haven't stopped thinking about it, so we're going we're gonna to see what we can do. I'm lecturing Scotty about forgetting your rod on the ranch because I've done it before. Now we got Scotty who just forgot his rod on the ranch. Seems kind of funny, huh? There he goes, dude. Might, you might need one of these, dude. You might need one. This is like standing on the bank, and there's a fish from like me to that rock right here. So, you know, say we're like we're doing like one of these, you know? I've got like maybe six inches of fly line on. <laughs> Something in me, like, you know, the, the Kevin Van Dam in me was like, when this fish eats, I gotta, like, hit it with one. I'm, I'm gonna hit it with one of these, right? I'm gonna give it a little pitch. And then I'm gonna go like this. When it eats, I'm gonna reel down. And I'm gonna step back. And so I did. And, uh... Did you catch him? Well, you know, I broke it off on the hook set. <laughs> and uh, I think everybody in Fremont County heard the, heard the break. Heard the trout hunter tippet yeah. break. Well, it was 5X trout hunter tippet. Well, now we're gonna do it again. I'm probably gonna break another one off tonight. So I actually brought my 1X out to fish on, on the caddis. So it's gonna be all right, dude. But there's a few. There's that one up there, and there's one that's like 20 feet down from him. They're kind of out in the middle right now because the water's a little higher. Maybe that's why. I don't really know. They're out in the middle for some reason. Dude, there's some, there's like two or three nice ones out there. I know. I got Dude, what, what if we did Gray Drake? Gray Drake to spent partridge. Do it. Oh, I didn't even know I have Gray Drakes. Should I put one on, dude? How savage would that be? I mean, I'm just going to do a double, right? Yeah. Dude, we may just spook the shit out of these fish with this fly. Probably will. 
or or the biggest fish in the river is going to move 30 feet what if you catch a 46 incher today dude and it turns out we get him out of the water and it's a tiger musky yeah what if it's a sturgeon i heard there's sturgeon in the henry sword well we're going to try a gray drake because colson had two of them in his hand That fish not a dink. You just lost it. Yeah. I swear to God, if you broke me off, I'm going to stop fishing trout with him. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? Classic Colson. Fucking up fish. <laughs> That's why we fish only Rio products at the old Henry Sport Angler. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, we were uh, unsuccessful tonight. We did not manage to land any fish, but fishing down here is super technical. Fishing 5X, small little dries. You're basically walking along the bank looking for rising fish. It's almost like red fishing. You know, you're hunting them. You're not really just blind casting, just kind of finding the risers and then trying to make a, a good reach cast and let a bunch of line. And um, it's really tough, but uh, it was really, really cool to see. Managed to feed a few, but did not manage to bring any to, uh, to the net. We got back to the car, saw some folks, and they were telling us there's a comet that's about to come by. And apparently it comes by only once every 6,000 years. So we're gonna, we're gonna hop over to the dock and uh, see what it's all about. Well, we're looking at the little Dicker right now with these people from Salt Lake Titty over here. <laughs> and uh, we're about to see this crazy comet. <laughs> it's so wow, sick. See it? Look at that. Period there, between the light yeah. and dark. You see that the streak going right there? Okay, it's like oh, you see I that see hole it. in the clouds. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Yes. There's like what a hole in the clouds. Oh, yeah. That's so sick. Yo, Scotty, yo, is there a comet out there somewhere, dude? I swear there's a comet. But you I swear to God, can't dude. I, I, it's not. It's not really showing up on here. You go, there's someone out. Somewhere out there. Dude, all I could see was the freaking light from your flashlight shooting through <laughs> like the sky. Just stars. <laughs> Dude, I have absolutely no idea where this comet is. Dude, I, there's absolutely no way this camera's gonna pick this up. The comet was hard to see at first, but once the sun fully set, the sky lit up, and boom, there it was. We snapped a few long exposure shots before heading to bed and getting ready for our last day in Idaho. It is our last day here in Idaho, and uh, Scotty has been hyping this whole carp thing up uh, this whole week. Well, it's a big old lake, and there's big old mirror carp, and you know, they're either there or they're not. Well, we're gonna see if we can get some of these Big monster carp. Maybe drink some Miller's. Good buddy. This is not open. <laughs> now we're gonna drink some Miller's. Yeah, so you're pretty much gonna see them either cruising or tailing, and we're gonna sight fish them like you would any other saltwater fish. But these are in the fresh water. So see what happens. Got one? This guy's hooked up. Hell yeah, dude. Oh. Well, something. I mean, we're seeing a lot of them spook, but the water's so muddy, it's impossible. There he is. Oh! Did you get that, Scotty?
Oh, there you go. <laughs> For whatever reason, losing clips was a theme of this trip, including the release of this big nasty carp. All right, we're taking a quick break right now, waiting on uh, waiting on Colson to get here with the boat. But Scotty's showing us uh, a little special place here in town. We got a little, a little specialty drink. Orchada. Orchada. It's like liquid cinnamon roll. It's amazing. <laughs> Thirteen bucks. So that that's what six fifty for orchada and steak quesadilla. Carbon time, boys. Yeah, buddy. You gotta put it right on. Yeah, it That's these ones to the right. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. There he is. Get the hammer. Put the hammer on him. Colton, you better get in there and get you another one. He said, oh my god, dude. He's <laughs> just running. Oh god, he's in my backing. Dude, I'm way in my backing. There you go, dude. Big ol' mirror. Flop him. Gonzo. Oh, come right? on. They may. I've never gotten it to happen. Dude, let's get him. I'm gonna get him to eat a fing dry. Got to. You just gotta put it like, I guess you just gotta put it like right where they're gonna be, you know? Yeah. Dude, this is about to be awesome. Like, yeah, the fear is to just like push up and then once you get there. Are you fing kidding me? What did he eat? <laughs> a renegade? I'm dead serious. <laughs> what X are you on? <laughs> rusty. <laughs> you know, I will literally try to catch a fish on a rusty. Try to break it. <laughs> Dude, this is this is like one of the most fun places to fish ever. Dude, he slurped it. I gave him I gave him the good old Henry Sport pause. <laughs> Dude, no, I trout set mine. You just gotta put the hammer on them. Buddy. Carp on it dry. Come on. <laughs> Reel down on it. Oh, cool. So what happened? I didn't get him. No, I think he ate. Dude, this is he ate and felt steel. Colson really can't get it done. It's unbelievable. This is like the easiest place in the world <laughs> to catch a carp. Scotty's wax like five. Colson can't get any. Sometimes I just flail. <laughs> I'm used to those ranch fish that want to eat like actual food. <laughs> and so I come out here, sit up on the front, and miss like five or six fish. <laughs> so then I'm like, I'm just gonna drink the rest of this beer and eat some muddy buddies and just feel bad for myself. Oh, Dude, look at that. They literally, the sun comes out and they're back. Oh, dude, I just got refused by a carp. He literally, he literally like sees it, backs up, and then goes. Olson's hooked up, baby. That didn't take long. <laughs> I just felt that thing flexing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. What happened? This is that rod, bro. <laughs> it's the most ghetto. <laughs> oh yeah! Look at that, boys. Yep, that's how we On do it. On the board. That's how we do it right there. You. Disgusting creature, man. Just kidding, this is Scotty's favorite fish, dude. He's going back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just as the night was coming to an end, Colson and I doubled up. Yeah. You doubled up, son. <laughs> it was the perfect way to wrap up the amazing week it had been. Yeah, buddy. 
A trip that really had no plan to begin with turned into an epic week of seeing new landscape, targeting new fish species, and meeting some awesome new friends. It was a reminder that when cool opportunities come up, especially fishing opportunities, you take them and don't look back. Oh, let's go, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Little tree. It just tastes like grass. <laughs>